In this video, I'm gonna do a controlled 87 mile loop and hand calculate the mileage I get with some mixed driving. I'm also gonna give you my unloaded average city driving and my unloaded average highway driving numbers and uh, kind of share what this truck can, is capable of from a miles per gallon standpoint unloaded. I hope you enjoy. So I had a 90-ish mile round trip planned with my family this weekend and decided to test the mileage of some mixed driving with my F350 unloaded. This is the high output with the XL off-road package, 331 gears, and I also have stock 33-inch Goodyear Wrangler tires on it. It includes my wife, my son, myself, and a full tank of diesel, plus a few hundred pounds of tools in my toolbox. I started at a Sinclair fuel station in Rockland and I did a full tank of diesel, waited 30 seconds and filled it up to the click. I will repeat this fueling method at the end of this trip from the same station, same pump for the most controlled results. The results were surprisingly good. I should also note that I don't have any additives in the tank. While I do run Arch Oil AR6500 every few tanks, I didn't want any in my tank since this trip uh, would be a baseline test, so I've made sure I ran through a few full tanks of diesel since adding any. I may try this test again sometime with the AR6500 added just to see if there is any difference, but I haven't done that yet, and I don't have any of this in my tank. So I started out the drive going through Rockland, then we go through Granite Bay, winding through Folsom, El Dorado Hills, and finally getting to the country roads of El Dorado and Amador County, which is mostly on Latrobe Road on our way out to Plymouth. The trip is exactly 43 and a half miles each direction and what I would call normal traffic for a Sunday afternoon. We were on our way to buy some Christmas gifts at a winery where we got married, so I figured this would be a nice drive to test the MPGs on my truck. I drove the speed limit the whole time, the speed of traffic um, as much as possible, and I also didn't try to actively get good or bad mileage, but I definitely don't have a heavy foot. This is just how I normally drive. As for the diesel driving experience, I have to say it's excellent towing, but really overkill for everyday commuting. I drive a short 24 miles round trip to work each day, and I also take this truck to the gym and the grocery store. But other than that, this truck is pretty much used for towing our family's 12,000 pound fifth wheel on family vacations. We recently got back from a 4,000 mile trip to Yellowstone, towing up and down the grades into Jackson, Wyoming, and this truck really shined. That being said, it's 25 feet long, so there are a lot of times where I feel like it's too cumbersome. Parking can be a little challenging, and doing a U-turn often requires reverse, but hey, it's not a Toyota Prius. I did get the long bed so that I wouldn't have to use a slider, plus it also came with a 48 gallon tank, and I could fit my toolbox in the back with the fifth wheel. With the fifth wheel. So that adds to the length with the crew cab. This truck is very spacious inside, and I believe it has the largest cab of any of the other big three brands, or I should say the other big, the other two brands. But again, where this truck really shines is towing in the mountains. With 500 horsepower and 1,200 pound-feet of torque, the 10 speed and engine braking, it is really effortless towing. I have thought at times, maybe I should have gotten the gas motor, saved the money, since even my fifth wheel doesn't require this much power. But when I fill up in the trucker lines at truck stops, or go down a steep grade without even hitting my brakes, it often reminds me of why I spent the extra money on the diesel. I do hate the fact that I have to add blue def, and I know that all of that complex emissions equipment may fail in time, but by the time the warranty is up, I will either trade the truck or delete the emissions crap entirely. I can't say I haven't already thought about deleting it, but being in California, I really can't. However, next year, we are moving to Indiana, and they are a lot less strict with emissions testing so I foresee this truck losing some underbelly weight sometime in my near future. Personally, I think that the strict emission standards our state has only drives up the cost of everything because it adds a good five to $10,000 per truck on the road today and everything is delivered by trucks. Add the fact that the emission systems often fail and it makes driving diesel a real question when you have HD gas trucks that can tow pretty heavy trailers nowadays. I would be lying if I said I didn't almost buy one, and I actually still think about switching since I only tow 10 to 20% of the time. But at the end of the day, driving a diesel truck is a premium experience, not a necessity. But back to the mileage bit. I average a solid 16 to 17 miles per gallon on my daily commute and short trips in town. 
I have seen as high as 24 miles a gallon on just highway mileage with, which, with virtually no idling or red lights, but that's pretty rare. In the end, this trip total was a total of 87 miles round trip in a mix of suburban traffic and country roads of you, as you have seen. I filled back up in Rockland using the same method as before, and the results were a total of 4.04 gallons used for 87 miles, coming out to 21.53 miles per gallon. This is slightly better than the truck's computer said, which was 20.6 miles per gallon, but I'm happy with both results for a nearly 7,000 pound truck. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next video.